Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to see how to create scatter plots using Plotly Express. Scatter plots allow us to take two variables from a data set and plot them against each other. And from that we can derive relationships between the two variables and understand if there is a correlation between them. There are many data visualisation libraries out there in the Python world and Plotly is just one of them. Plotly is a web-based toolkit that allows you to create powerful and interactive data visualizations with very few lines of code. It is a popular library within the data science community and it can be used to generate plots for machine learning, statistical analysis, maps and much, much more. The Plotly library can be used in two main ways. We have Plotly Graph Objects, which is a low-level interface for creating plots. And then we have Plotly Express, which allows us to create the same plots, but using much simpler and higher level syntax. And it's Plotly Express that is going to be the focus of today's video. We are going to see how we can create a simple, interactive scatter plot of well-logged data. We will see how to add some colour to it, and we will also see how we can change the axis from linear to logarithmic. And at the end, we will see how we can go from two dimensions to three dimensions. So let's get started and go over to our Jupyter Notebook. The first thing that we're going to do with our Jupyter Notebook is import the libraries that we're going to use. So for this particular tutorial, we're going to be using plotly.express and we will import that as px. And we will also import pandas as pd. I will quickly run this cell. And then we're going to use the pd.read underscore csv function to read in our data. The data set for this tutorial comes from a machine learning competition that was held last year in order to predict lithology from well logging measurements. I've put a link down in the description below to where you can obtain this data set and also read details about it. So I will read in the csv file and we will display the header which displays the first five rows of the data frame plus the column names. And we can see that we've got well names, depth underscore md, x location, y location and z location, as well as a geological group and geological formation. We then have our logging measurements such as caliper, shallow resistivity, medium resistivity and what we see here is we have these three dots within the middle of our data frame. And this tells us that there are a lot more columns than those that are displayed here. We can then call upon df.columns to view all of the columns within that data frame. And when we do that, we return back a list of all the names within the, the header. We can see that we have our, our well name, depths, uh, location, and also our geological group information data. So in between that, in between our med and DTS, we can see that we've got our depth, which is our deep resistivity, rho b, gamma ray, sgr, etc. So don't worry if you're not too familiar with this data. We're going to just make some standard scatter plots using Plotly Express. So this can be done with any type of data set that you have. As this data set contains information from multiple wells that have been drilled within the Norwegian North Sea, we, we can see how many wells we have in here and what their names are. And what we get back when we run df.well.unique is an array of each of the well names that are contained within this well column here. We can see that we have 12 wells and what we're going to do is we're going to slice that data or take a subset of it so that we're only working with a single well. And this just makes it easier to visualize what is happening. So to take a subset of that data, we create a new variable called df underscore well. And what we're going to do is call upon the original data frame df and then in square brackets, we're going to put our condition. So we're going to look into the original data frame, into the well column, and we're going to find any data that is equal to 15 slash 9 dash 13. And this will return back that well. So we can run that. And then when we call upon df underscore well, we can see that we've got a data frame with the first five and the last five rows, all having the same well name. If we want to be sure that we've got the right well within this data, we can call upon df underscore well dot well dot unique to return back how many unique elements are within that well column. And as we can see, we only have one. So now that our data is loaded and now that we've got a subset of the data, we can then move on to making plots. So the first plot we're going to do is a simple scatter plot. And you'll see how simple this syntax is when working with Plotly Express. To get a scatter plot, we type px.scatter. And then we pass in our data frame, df well, and our x variable, which we will set to n phi, and our y variable, which we will set to row b. 
And when we run this, we get back a scatter plot. So at first it may look like it's just a basic scatter plot, but we can hover the mouse over it and we can see that we have measurement values appearing in the tooltip. We can see our NFI and row B values anywhere we hover. We can also zoom in by left clicking and dragging a selection box around the data. And if we want to go back to how it was before, we can then just double click on this plot and it will zoom out. Alternatively, if we zoom in, we have some controls up here in the top right. So we can select this home button here, which will reset the axis and put it back to what it was at the beginning. If you're familiar with well logging data, you may be familiar with the density neutron cross plot, which we have here. And you will know that the density measurement is, or the density axis, the y axis, is usually invaried and ranges from about 1.5 down to about 3, depending on the data. And our x axis goes from about minus 0.05 out to 1. And we can specify those ranges by simply adding in a few more keyword arguments. So for the x axis, we'll type range underscore x, and then we'll set that equal to a list, which will be minus 0 0.05 out to 1. And then we do the same with the y axis, range underscore y is equal to 3.5 by 1. And you will notice that I've put the numbers in reverse. So the 3.5 will be the first number on the, on the y axis down at the bottom. And this is just a simple way to invert the y axis in Plotly Express. So when we run that, we now have our fixed scales on our y axis and our x axis. And again, if we zoom in on any of this, we can then reset the axis and it will go back to these values that we have set here. So this scatter plot is a little bit bland at the moment. We can only tell the relationship between two variables. But what happens if we want to have a third variable on here? Well, we can add some color onto the plot by typing in color is equal to gr. And that is another column from the data frame. So when we run that, we will see that we now have the high gamma ray values concentrated down here and the lower ones concentrated down here and also up here on the top right. So if you're familiar with reading a density neutron cross plot, you'll know that our shalier intervals are within this, this area here, generally. And our cleaner intervals are generally down here, with higher porosity intervals sort of trending along the matrix lines, which we don't have on this particular plot, but we will see how to do that in a future video. So at the moment, it's a little bit hard to distinguish where our clean intervals are and where our shalier intervals are. And that is because this color bar is ranging from about 0 to about 500 API. So we can change that simply by typing in a new keyword argument called range underscore color and we set this to 0 to 150 and then run the plot again. And there we have a much better looking plot. We can see where we have our high gamma ray values that are associated with our shalier intervals and where we have our lower or cleaner intervals down here. And we can see that when we hover over any of the points we have all three measurement values within the tooltip. We can see that we have our N5, row B, and GR values. But what happens if we want to color by a category or a categorical variable? Well, what we do is we just take this range underscore color section out, and what I'm going to do is pass in LIF, which is an abbreviation for lithology. So when I run this, we will see that the plot changes, and we now have our data colored by each of these categories over here on the right. And we can see that they're fairly spread out on this plot and it can be a bit difficult to see which one is which. But if we just double click on any one of these, so if I take limestone for instance, we can see that we have points down here. If we want to add in some other lithologies, we can then just click them on. So I will add on sandstone and we can see that we have the points up here. And you'll notice that the tooltip color also changes depending on the point that's been hovered over. We've we have orange here for when we're hovering over the sandstone and then a light purple when we're hovering over the limestone point. Now we can add multiple ones of these onto the plot and if I double click again we can then isolate say the anhydrite. We can change the lift color to group which is their geological groups. So we then have our geological groupings going from the top of the well down to the bottom of the well. So we've got our Nordland group, Horderland, Rogaland and these are all the geological groups that are located within the North Sea. So we can see that we can again isolate some of these, so maybe the Zechstein group, which is our deepest group within this, uh, this particular data set. And we can see that we've got a mixture of points down here that look almost like the anhydrite points. So we can use these multiple scatter plots to isolate and understand our data better. 
So next we will look at changing some of the axis parameters. We will look at adding in a logarithmic axis. If you're familiar with logging data or core data, you will be familiar with a poro perm cross plot or a porosity permeability scatter plot. And all we're doing is plotting the porosity that is measured from the core sample against the core permeability. And then from that we can infer relationships between the porosity and permeability and apply that to our log data, such as a poro perm transform. So for this data set I will load in a separate well which is in another CSV, and then if we read that one in and display the data, we can see that we have our core sample number, the depth that it was acquired at, our C pore value, which is our core porosity, CKH, which is our core permeability, and CGD, which is our core grain density. And we can see that we have some of the comments or remarks filled in here. So let's just start with creating a basic scatter plot, px.scatter, and then we pass in our data, which is going to be core data. We'll set the X value to C pore, and we will set the Y value to CKH. And now that we have our poroperm cross plot, we can see that we have a lot of points down here close to zero, and then we have a few points that are way up here that are close to about 100, 200 uh, millidarses. So often there is a lot of variation down here which we can't really see on a linear scale. So we need to set this y-axis to a logarithmic scale. So to set our y-axis to logarithmic, we can type in log underscore y and we set the range of that from 0 0.01 to 1000. And then when we run that, we now see that we have a logarithmic y-axis going from 0 0.01 down here on the bottom left and then we've got our, each of our decades, 0 0.1, 10, and then 100. And, we can, and then we can see the spread of the data. So typically our good, our good geology or good reservoir rock is generally up here on the top left where we have high permeability and high porosity. As we get down towards here, we then tend to have shalier intervals and up here we could have a mixture of shale or bad plugs that may have been fractured so you end up with a high permeability, but a low porosity. So going back to our original data, we can add some extra information to our plots. So at the moment, when we run this, this bit of code, we can see the scatter plot that we had before. But if we want to add in some extra information, such as histograms or box plots, or even violin plots, we can do that easily in Plotly Express by simply specifying keyword arguments. So first, I'm just going to add some color to this plot and we will use our group, our geological grouping. And what we need to do now is type in marginal underscore x is equal to histogram. And we will see that when it appears, we now have our scatter plot with each of the different geological groupings, but we also have this histogram along the top of the plot. And we can go into any of these groups here so as you say, the Shetland group, and by double clicking on it, and we can see that we get a histogram specifically for that group. If we want to add some more on, we can then see that we have the histogram updating as we update the plot. And again, if we zoom in or pan around, we can see the histogram updates based on where we are within that plot. So if we tick them all on, we can see that we have all of our groups here and we can do the same along the y-axis. But this time, I'm going to add in a box plot, just by typing in box. And what you see is now we have a box plot along the y-axis for our row B values. And if we hover over each of these, we can see the values that it's picked up, but we can also hover over the center of the box plot where the notch is to get our key statistics, our minimum, are Q1 and Q3, the quartiles, and this occurs with each of the plots here. And again, if we isolate certain ones, we can see that the plot updates interactively. Next, we will move on to making our plots a little bit more appealing. We will move on from 2D to 3 dimension, and we can do that by just simply changing the call that we're making here. So if I type in px.scatter, underscore 3D. We then need to pass in our data frame, which is df underscore well. And then we pass in our x value, which we will set to n5. 
We'll then set our Y value to row B. Instead of specifying a color here, we can specify a Z value. And I will set this to GR. I will add some ranges in for our values. So range X is equal to minus 0 0.05 to 1. And range Y is equal to 3 to 1.5. And now we have our 3D scatter plot, and we can move around that uh, as you would just with any other 3D plot, and it's just by left clicking on the plot and moving up and down and left and right. But we can add a little bit of colour onto this, and we will set this to our group, our geological group, just to highlight certain parts of the data. We can see that if we zoom in, we can get each of the points again by hovering over, and we can see the colours of the tooltip changing with, and we can also change the data that is showing by clicking on each of these here. So if I just reduce that down to a few, we can then see that we have our data for these specific groups. Now, if you caught one of my last videos, we looked at the Welly library and how to plot 3D well paths using matplotlib. So in this instance, we can do that with Plotly. So again, if I just call upon px.scatter underscore 3D, and what I will do is I will pass in the original data frame, and you'll see why in a minute. X is equal to X underscore lock for our X location. Y is equal to Y underscore lock. And our Z is equal to Z underscore lock. And we will also set the color is equal to group. And as I'm using the original data frame, it may just take a little bit longer to display. So now we have the well paths for each of the wells within the data frame. And that is what is measured by the X lock and the Y lock. So we have our Z lock, our TVD SS uh, information. So we're going below the surface. And we can see that we have each of our wells, which are all vertical in this instance. And we can see that we have variations in our data going from left to right. So if I just look at the Hordaland group, I'm just double clicking on this. And what we can see is that we've got a general trend to deepening towards the right hand side of our data. And then we can zoom around or we can add in other formations. And we can also color by our curve. So if I type in GR and then set the range underscore color is equal to 0 to 150. And once it's loaded, we can then see the variation in gamma ray with depth between each of the wells. We have high gamma ray values, which could indicate our shalier intervals. So we have a few wells that are showing high, high concentrations of gamma ray, whereas a few wells are much, much lower which it could indicate that it's less shaly within these sections of the field. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on creating scatter plots using Plotly Express. If you're interested in creating other data visualizations within Python using matplotlib or Plotly, then be sure to check out my past videos on my channel. If you've enjoyed today's content, then be sure to give it a thumbs up by clicking that like button down below to help the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.